Hello and welcome to this lesson of A-Level Physics. In today's lesson we're going to be focusing on internal resistance. We're going to try and understand what internal resistance is. Now we have three aims for today's lesson. Define what internal resistance is, look at the effect of internal resistance on components and deduce the size of internal resistance from calculations, which links in to the following part of the specification. Now in this particular lesson we're going to focus on the theory and the mathematics behind the electromotive force and internal resistance and focus on the required practical link to this in another lesson. So in today's lesson we're going to look primarily at what internal resistance is in terms of electrical circuits. Now as I talked about previously resistance occurs when the mobile charge carriers collide with metal ions so transferring their kinetic energy store into the internal energy surroundings. Now whilst that happens in the metal ions of the components, it can also occur when the mobile charge carriers collide with ions found inside a power source, which would also dissipate energy into the internal energy of surroundings. This is primarily what internal resistance is, and you can observe internal resistance as it's what makes batteries and cells warm when they're used for prolonged periods of time. Now, to understand the concept of internal resistance, we must consider an electrical circuit. Now, in any electrical circuit, there's a potential difference output and there's a power source input. So if we consider this series circuit, the power source is providing EMF into the circuit, whilst the two bulbs are providing a potential difference out of the circuit. Now, this is an example of a potential divider because this circuit has two or more outputs in series with the power supply. So we'll split the, the voltage from the power source into two different potential differences regarding the outputs. Now it will split the potential difference in relationship to the resistances of these particular outputs. Now as we've previously stated, EMF into the circuit will equal potential difference out of the circuit. But this assumes that the resistance in the circuit is only produced by the potential difference outputs. In this example, the bulbs. We assume that there's no internal resistance found anywhere else in the circuit, which is the basis of Kirchhoff's second law of electrical circuits. Now, the resistance produced by these potential difference outputs we call the load resistance, or we can sometimes call it the external resistance. Now, previously, we've looked at equivalent resistance equations, and as these are two load resistors in series with each other, we can just add the two uh, external resistances to find your equivalent load resistance of 2R. Now, that's just from the resistance laws that were derived from Kirchhoff's laws looked at earlier in the course. However, all conductors produce an electrical resistance to current flow as they all contain ion, ions, which also includes the electrical wires. So this occurs because the mobile charge carriers collide with the metal ions of the wires as they travel through. So as a result, we've looked at this before, this is primarily what resistance is. Now if there was no collisions between the charge carriers and the ions, there will be no resistance. Now a material like this is what we call a superconductor. Currently, as of 2020, we haven't observed any superconductors at room temperature. Now, as well as the electrical wires providing an electrical resistance, the EMF source itself will also provide a resistance. This occurs because the mobile charge carriers collide with the chemical ions of the power source. So the chemical ions found in the power source, if it's a battery, or if it's a power pack, the mobile charge carriers will collide with the chemical ions of that power source. They'll collide. That will slow the mobile charge carriers down, producing a resistance. So we can combine any resistance in a circuit which is not due to the potential difference outputs as the internal resistance of the circuit. So that will include both the wires and the power source. Now to symbolize this, we draw a resistor inside the power source system. Now we place the symbol in the power source as the majority of the internal resistance is found in the power supply. And we symbolize internal resistance 
with a small r. Now, the symbol for a load or external resistance is capital R. Now, all circuits should be drawn with an internal resistance in the power supply unless it's stated in the question or the problem that you don't have to consider the internal resistance. Now, in reality, all electrical circuits will have an internal resistance and a load or external resistance, which is shown by small r and capital R, respectively. Now, this will now give us two different values for an EMF source which is now an EMF, which is the theoretical work done per unit charge placed into the circuit by the source, and a terminal potential difference, which is the actual work done per unit charge into the circuit by the source. Now, for example, the EMF in this power source could be 10 volts, which is the theoretical value, but the terminal potential difference is 8 volts, which is the actual value supplied to the circuit. Now this shows that an EMF source can never be 100% efficient as there is always a loss of useful energy inside the source due to an internal resistance. Now the value stated on a power pack or a battery is always the EMF. Now the EMF is, as we said before, a theoretical value which could only be measured when a voltmeter is placed over the source because in theory the voltmeter has an infinite resistance so as a result would draw no current and as a result wouldn't produce an internal resistance. Now a name we use for EMF in electrical engineering is the open circuit voltage so that's a synonym for EMF. Now that's because the EMF can only ever be recorded when the circuit is open because well, as we said before if in theory the circuit is open or there's an infinite resistance voltmeter in the circuit, uh, there will be no current drawn but on the power source, so as a result there will be no internal resistance, so no terminal potential difference. Now the infinite resistance, like we said, will mean no electrons will flow and no terminal PD will be registered. Now the difference between the EMF and the terminal PD is termed the lost volts of the power source. So lost volts is equal to EMF minus terminal potential difference. So the lost volts is the volts of energy dissipated per charge to the surroundings due to the internal resistance. Now this, like we said before, means all electrical circuits can never be 100% efficient as some energy is always lost to the internal energy of the surroundings even if there's only one useful output in the circuit. So for example, in our previous case we said that the EMF was 10 volts and the terminal potential difference was 8 volts. This tells us the lost volts is 10 volts minus 8 volts, so in this case is 2 volts. Now the lost volts can also be determined with an equation with it V equals IR, but this time R is small r, it refers to the internal resistance. So a source of EMF always has some resistance to the electrical current within it, which we call the internal resistance, which has two effects on the circuit. Number one, the voltage across the terminals, the terminal potential difference of the source, will always drop as the current is drawn from it, and the source is always less than 100% efficient, as energy is always dissipated as internal resistance. And like we said before, the voltage quoted on batteries or power packs is the voltage measured when no current is drawn from it, which we call the open circuit voltage or the EMF. Now, the, as we said, the value stated on power packs is the open circuit voltage, which is an idealized or theoretical value. So in this example, we have the power pack set to an EMF of 3 volts, but in reality, the terminal potential difference will be much lower. You can never measure the stated value of a power pack in any electrical measurement, as there will always be some lost volts due to internal resistance. So in this example, each battery here has an EMF of 1.5 volts, but in reality, its terminal potential difference will be much lower. Now, we can link this with a mathematical equation. As we mentioned earlier, EMF equals terminal potential difference plus the lost volts due to the internal resistance. So we can calculate the voltage, in this case the terminal potential difference with the equation V equals IR, which comes from the resistance equation found earlier in the course. Now we can use this to find the lost volts, which would be big R, but also the sorry, which would be small r, but also for the terminal potential difference, which will be big R. 
Now, as we know, in this circuit, this is a series circuit. As such, current has to be the same in series circuits. So therefore, when we look at I in this particular equation, I will be the same for both the terminal potential difference and the lost volts. So whilst the terminal potential difference is produced by the load resistance, the lost volts is produced by the internal resistance. Now, like we said from Kirchhoff's first law, that current in the series circuit is constant. This means it's the same value for internal load resistance, so we consider it a constant in the equation. So we can factorise now I out of that particular equation, so as a result, it's I times by R plus small r. So as a result, as we've just explicitly shown here, we can have our EMF to equal I times by big R, which symbolises the external or load resistance, plus small r, which symbolises the internal resistance. Now, we can look at this in a question, for example. So, if we said a battery has an EMF of 0.15 volts and an internal resistance of 0.50 ohms, and you're asked to calculate the terminal potential difference when the current flowing through the battery is 6 milliamps, well, first thing we'd do is we'd write out the equation. EMF equals terminal PD plus loss volts, so therefore terminal PD equals EMF minus loss volts. We would then write out the equation for loss volts, which is I times by small r. Now, we don't need to do that for terminal PD in this example because we're trying to work it out. So now we place the values in. Now remember, in 6 milliamps needs to be converted into a standard form of amps. You then work it through like that. You make sure you've got the correct number of significant figures. And each value has been given to two significant figures in the question. So you give your answer to two significant figures in the answer. Then you add a unit in to so get an answer of 0.15 volts. Now you could also be asked to calculate the energy dissipated every second due to the internal resistance. Well, you can still use the same equations you've looked at previously. For example, power equals current squared times by R. But when you look at the energy dissipated due to, to the internal resistance, we must be considering small r. So it's I squared small r. You can then pop the values in. So it's 0 0.60 squared times by 0 0.35. Work it out. Put it to the right number of significant figures. Once again, in the question, it was two significant figures for each value. So it's two significant figures for your answer. And you add a unit. To that. Now, the internal resistance of a source of EMF can be shown in many examples in the real world, but the probably most common example, and it can be seen quite easily, is when you start a car on a cold, dark morning. Because the headlamps in a car are connected in parallel across a 12 volt battery, so the starter motor is also in parallel controlled by the ignition switch. So since the motor has a low resistance, it demands a very high current, about 60 amps. So the battery itself has a low internal resistance, about 0 0.01 ohms. So when you start a car, there's a large sudden demand for more current. This leads to a large lost volts, as there's a larger current due to the starter motor. So this gives you a smaller terminal potential difference, as there's a greater lost volts, which means each parallel circuit in your car will receive the same potential difference due to Kirchhoff's second law. So the motor will receive less potential difference than it had previously, and so would the headlamps. So therefore, your headlamps dim. But when the engine fires, the start and motor switch is opened, the current drops back down, the, the lost volts goes down, the terminal potential difference rises, and then the headlamps return to normal. Now, we can also use the concept of internal resistance to investigate what your maximum load in your circuit could be. Now, the internal resistance of a source of EMF sets the limit on the amount of power that can be supplied to the external or load circuit. Now, as, some of, as a source of EMF, when it's connected to the load, will always dissipate some of its energy to the, in, to the internal energy surroundings due to internal resistance and transfer the rest of the load. Now, often, we want to transfer as much electrical power as possible from the source to the wanted load. Now, investigations have shown that in order to do this, the load resistance of the circuit must be equal to the internal resistance of the EMF source, which is shown here in this particular graph. And that will be extremely useful if you're trying to replace a speaker or an amplifier, for example, in a circuit. Now, this is shown because if 
the internal resistance is very high, this will dissipate a lot of energy out of the circuit uh, at the power source, meaning that there would not be much energy left to the wanted uh, sources in the load, therefore the power supplied to the, to the loads would be low. Now if the internal resistance was too low, however, the current in the circuit would then be very, very high and there'd be little energy dissipated from the power source. However, this would increase the load resistance and that would mean the output power is low. Because remember, we define the output power as the useful output power of the circuit and the energy dissipated to the surroundings will be high due to the load resistance, so therefore that energy is unlikely to be useful. So therefore, this shows us if we have small r and big R to be both moderate values and equal to each other, then the current is still quite high because not as there's not much energy being dissipated to the surroundings in the power source, but whilst the load resistance is also quite high, it won't dissipate a lot of that energy in the circuit to uh, wasteful sources. So therefore, the wanted and or useful output power is quite high. So the maximum useful power in a circuit is delivered when the internal resistance equals the load resistance. Now the internal power is equal to P equals I squared small r, whilst the load power is equal to P equals I squared large r. So therefore we can pop it through into an equation, which then means that the peak of the curve is when r e big R equals small r. So the maximum power delivered to the load is when the load or the external resistance is equal to the internal resistance. In, in an electrical engineering, we say that the load resistance is matching the source resistance. So therefore, how I remember it is, max power occurs when load resistance equals internal resistance of the circuit. So in today's lesson, we should have looked at what internal resistance is and defined it, look at the effect of internal resistance on components, and deduce the size of the internal resistance from the calculations. Thank you very, very much for listening to this particular lesson on internal resistance.